The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus appeared among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, they usually say that seeing is believing. And sometimes when people saw Jesus, they believed. That happened last week when we read the story about Thomas. Thomas refused to believe that Jesus was alive until Jesus appeared before him. And then he said, wow, now I know because I've seen him. But as the other stories of Jesus appearing to his disciples after his resurrection make clear, just seeing Jesus was not always believing. As Luke tells the story anyway in today's Gospel reading, when Jesus appeared in the room, they made the logical conclusion that what they were seeing was a ghost. So Jesus reached out his hands and his feet and he said, look, touch me, see that I'm not a ghost. I have flesh, I have bones, which ghosts don't have. And clearly they did. But Luke says, in their joy, they were still disbelieving. They were still wondering. So finally, almost in exasperation, Jesus says, okay guys, have you got something to eat? Give me something to eat. So they give him a piece of broiled fish, and he takes it, and he eats it in their presence. Eating. That's what did it for the disciples. It wasn't seeing. It wasn't touching. It was eating. Eating was what made the resurrection real for them. The eating that Jesus did was the thing that really convinced them that God's love and God's power had really overcome the worst that the world could possibly dish out. And eating doesn't seem like it should be such a big deal. After all, this is the only story in the entire New Testament which actually says that after his resurrection, Jesus, which, which actually really narrates Jesus after his resurrection, taking something, sticking it in his mouth, chewing it, and swallowing it. There are other places that say, you know, Jesus ate and drank with his disciples after the resurrection, but you could just say, well, Jesus took the bread and the fish, and he shared it with the disciples, but it doesn't actually say he took it, stuffed it in his mouth, and he swallowed it. Why would one of the evangelists waste important papyrus space talking about how Jesus physically ate something? And I think it was because that eating was actually important. That eating was what made the resurrection real in the lives of those disciples. That was what finally and fully convinced them that Jesus was really alive. It bound them back together as a community. And that eating was what empowered them then to go out and really tell people that they had experienced something real, not just the illusion of seeing a ghost. But I wonder sometimes if we pass over eating a little too quickly. If maybe we see it as just sort of an unimportant detail in the story, one more thing that the disciples were supposed to see just to kind of convince them, but it's not really important. Sometimes the way we eat, in fact, shows that eating isn't always necessarily important for us, right? We eat on the fly. We eat on the way to go do something more important. Sometimes we even stop eating at all because there are so many more important things on our schedule we've got to get done. 
so we just give up on eating. But I wonder if eating is really more important than we think it is. It's not just something biological that we have to do. Maybe it's in the eating that God's love becomes real in our lives as well. I think it is the case that sometimes eating, and eating together, is often what makes our relationships with each other real. Building and strengthening relationships with one another almost always eventually involves eating together. Whether it's spending family time around the table where we talk and we share and we grow with one another, but the eating, if it weren't for the eating, that wouldn't happen. Whether it's getting together over a meal or just for coffee, that eating is what makes those relationships real. And, and sometimes we look at things like great wedding feasts and we say, wow, this is really important. Can you imagine a wedding without some kind of a big banquet or something afterwards? In some respects, it's totally non-important to the actual vows that are being exchanged between two people. But the eating is somehow what helps makes it real. Eating is sometimes how God makes his relationship with us real. I was thinking about this the other day and, and, and wondering, you know, the night before Jesus dies, he says to his disciples, I want you to be able each and every day to continue to experience my living presence with you. And he could have told them to do anything to experience his presence. He could have told them to sit around together and tell stories. He could have told them to sit around and read the Bible. He could have told them to act out his acts of service to others. And all of those things are good, but, but what he told them to do was gather around the table to eat and to drink. And in that eating, he would be present with them. Sometimes, in fact, it's the eating that makes God's love present in the lives of other people. And that's why it really is important if you want to convince people of the reality of God in their lives, if you want to convince people that God actually loves them, you don't just walk around and say, God loves you. Like the one place in, for, in James says, you know, God loves you, be warm, be filled, but not actually clothe them or feed them. So often, sharing God's love involves giving them something. Whether it's bringing food in for gazers for help or doing some kind of world hunger thing, can be as simple as when somebody's sick or when somebody's feeling down and you go to their house and you bring them something to eat. It's the eating that makes it real. <coughs> so I think sometimes maybe the, the most important thing, one of the most important things about this reading is not to pass over eating too lightly. Because very often God works in our lives through basic, simple things like eating. Sometimes we're just thinking, well, you know what? Eating is what we do on our way to do something that's really the work God wants us to do. So we eat quickly on the way to a meeting. Or we grab something on the way to an important service project. Or we give up eating because we just don't have time with all the other important things that are on our schedule. Maybe God wants us to focus on the eating. To pay attention to what's going on as we eat. Today we start First Communion instruction for 10 of our kids. And it's always great to, actually, I always really like doing First Communion instruction about third, fourth grade, because the kids always pay really good attention to it. They're all excited about it. It's, it's a little bit different than confirmation when we're kind of like, yeah, right. <laughs> but you can do a lot of stuff. You can introduce a lot of basic, really good, deep theological concepts, even to third and fourth graders. But but what it all comes down to is this. When Jesus wanted his disciples to be able to walk with him each and every day, experiencing his risen presence, what he told them to do was gather around a table and eat with him and with one another. Eat and drink. Be strengthened by my presence. He didn't tell us why exactly he chose eating rather than something else. He didn't explain neatly how his presence was going to be there. But what he told us to do was gather around the table, pay attention to the eating, and in that eating, experience the living <coughs> presence among us right now. 
eating in the Bible is always more than just about eating. So what Jesus calls us to do each and every day is also to consider that eating that we do isn't just about eating. And even as he ate in the presence of his disciples and the resurrection became real for them, Jesus calls us to eat with him and with one another so that the reality of his living presence becomes real for us and for others that we share a meal with.